So entanglement is the idea that it's a property that a pair of particles can have, or a trio of particles, or any number of particles, can be entangled together. And what that means is that if, if they are entangled, then I can, I can measure one, and the other, and change this one, and the other one will react correspondingly. So if I have two particles that are created in the same instance, so if they both emitted from the same radioactive decay, or if they're both created in the same single physical process, and they'll be fundamentally linked in a really deep way, such that if I change one, the other one reacts and corresponds, changes correspondingly instantaneously. So, there's been experiments that have been done to have tested quantum mechanics that are continually being done, and they've been done with a lot of mind being these things, and they have continually verified this idea of entanglement. And there's one that was published, the results were published in 2015, where this Dutch group in this university in Holland, they took two electrons, both entangled, and they separated them just into 1.3 kilometers, and they continually measured one, and then the other, they measured one, and then the other. And they found that every time they measured this one, this one, two, three, 1.3 kilometers away, would respond instantaneously in complement to the one that had been changed this time. So to, to put it simply, they shook one and the other one shook. And they shook one and the other one shook. And now, when I, so when I give this talk to you now, when I try to communicate these ideas to you, my larynx, my voice box will vibrate the air in my mouth, and this will propagate sound waves the pressure waves outwards towards me, and you'll hear it through your So I'm sending a signal from my mouth to you, and you will hear it. And the signal moves at 340 meters per second. Then if I wanted to call my, call my mum, for example, I take my phone and I dial my phone. My phone sends a signal up to a satellite in space, and brings it right back down to England, and if she wants to talk to me, she'll pick up the phone and she'll listen. <laughs> and this signal travels from my phone to the satellite back down to Earth at a speed of 3,000 million meters per second, the speed of light. And nothing that we know in the universe can travel faster than this. So we used to, all the time, we used to seeing these signals being transmitted from one thing to another, we used to communicating with each other via signal. And we know there's a fundamental limit on how fast signals can travel in time. So when I shake this one electron, this experiment on, and the other one instantaneously reacts, there can be no signal that's passed from this loop. So these particles are created in a single instance of MC, and they, they just know what the other one is doing. They have this implicit knowledge of how this one is reacting when it's being touched and the way that I'm probing it. And there can be no signal, no communication between the two of them, they just know. And this is a really, really, really bizarre idea. I think it takes a long time to really understand how bizarre it is. So I guess, I'll tell you a story. I was, I was asked to help out at this, uh, this theatre workshop that happened beginning of last year somewhere in London. And the director, she hired lots of actors and sound engineers and writers to come and speak to her and try and come up with some ideas for a show they wanted to do about physics. And this one actor in particular, Janine, she heard the story of entanglement and it reminded her of a story, this true story that she told us that I'll try and tell to you now. And she was basically, she was in a car accident. It was a really, really terrible car accident. The car was driving very fast on the road about 11, 12 o'clock at night, and it flipped. The car flipped upside down, landed upside down. And with her one free arm, she sort of took out her phone and she called, she called her mum. And before the phone even rung, her mum was on the other end of the line asking what's wrong. So she rang, and her mum didn't hear the phone ring. She instantly picked up and spoke to her daughter. And that such a beautiful story could have been invoked by some description of science to me is incredible. The idea that entanglement sort of made her realise that yes, this is what happened. You know, my mother and I were perhaps entangled at birth in some single instance of genesis. And, and when I rang and when I called her and I was in trouble, she just instantly knew. When I shook the phone, she shook. And I think. Last time I spoke about space, I spoke about the universe, and we talked about how, how these, sometimes these ideas can make us feel really insignificant and small. And it can be quite a depressing feeling to learn how big and how the universe is, how long it's lasted for. 
When I talk about atomic physics, I don't get that at all. I think it's amazing that there's a world that's literally just underneath our noses, back to the world that, of atoms that make up our noses, the world that makes this table, the world that makes the chairs that you all sit on now, and it's a world that's totally alien from our own. It's something where nothing is given, where everything is surprised, but still we find these relationships between this fundamental atomic physical world and these beautiful human experiences like Janine with her phone call to her mother. And I think it's a really beautiful thing that fills me with a sense of warmth when I do science because I think that it's incredible that you can relate something so bizarre to the atomic world that fills up our own to something so beautiful that the mother knew and her thoughts and trouble. And I guess I'd like to stop there and uh, yeah, I'll end on a positive note this week and <laughs> next week I'll talk about fundamental physics and ground unified theories, the search for ground unified theories. And I kind of want to ask whether it actually is a good idea to search for a unified theory of everything at all in this postmodern world. Thank you.